Hi, welcome to Norm's Psychic World. I'm Norm, the host. For today that I've ever done, um, I'm, I'm sure it'll be an interest to all. I expect to get positive and negative phone calls all this, however, and that's okay. I have her with me, Beverly, what's your last name? Sine. Sine and? Madeline Mir. Madeline Mir. Beverly is, ha, has started a petition uh, to go before the legislator in the Senate of New Hampshire about um, murderers who are being let out on parole. Beverly's here to explain what her feelings are and why she's doing this. Um, we're also going to show you a reenactment of a show that was on the Maury Polary show. And we're going to speak a little bit more with Beverly on that. And I'm going to hopefully tell her whether I see success for not coming. That's the key. Are we successful or are we not? The key is, folks, um, I read this article in the Union Leader. Um, I was quite impressed with it. I wasn't sure, and I'm not sure about why I'm doing it, but I do know I have to do it, okay? Um, Beverly, if you can start out, please, and show the, this is the picture of the man who stabbed her sister, imagine this, folks, over 36 times. And this man, this varmint of the community, is getting out on parole when? In May. In May. This man who was convicted of stabbing her sister 26 times. And folks, the actual, and this is the lady that um, he, he stabbed, that he stabbed to over. 36 times. Imagine that with the two little children there. But imagine she took the, your sister took the blame for you, right? Yes. Yeah, took her, took your spot. Took, took my spot. spot. Okay. Okay, now, uh, what g gave you the idea to do this? Um, uh, closer I got to Richard getting out, I was finding out that victims' families have no rights and that the um, actually the um, criminal has more rights and so I started asking questions like when Rick gets out am I going to be able to know where he's being located and they say no and um, since he that killing was meant for me I feel I have the right my mother has a right and my other siblings have the right to know where this man's going to be relocated and that's what made me come up with the Diane Lemire Victims Rights Bill. Okay. And uh, who is Diane Lemire? My sister, the one that was murdered. Okay. okay. And it, it, this bill is also um, uh, like a memorial for her and a memorial for other victims that have been murdered either by domestic violence, DWI, or, or you know. Yeah. Does that, all include, uh, does that also include the people who contract to have people? I'm trying to put that in. Um, I made myself clear that, like, um, like the Pamela Smart case, um, yes, I feel she should have to register. Okay. Um, I also feel if you're driving DWI, um, you should have to register as well if you kill somebody with your car while you're driving drunk. Yeah. So you have no bias, no, uh, no um, category no. for anything. Because it could be male person. or female who does the killing, or um, your kids, grandparents, whoever. Are you getting any response at all from the um, legislators or senators? Um, Senator John Gallus said that he would submit it in his next section session. Um, I also have three New Hampshire reps that says that they are willing to introduce the bill in September. And um, I've got over 1,300 signatures and from getting a lot more taxpayers and yeah. stuff. But I am asking, like, um, if you don't know where to sign a petition, you can um, write me letters of support, um, call me, 
Okay. Now, what's your dot com? Huh? And uh, how can they reach you through the internet, right? Yeah, they can reach me at, for, through my email, okay. um, B E V F R O M B E R L I N at AOL.com. Okay. It's Bev from Berlin. Okay. Um, now we're going to see the reenactment of what happened. Richard was devastated. Diane was dead. She was stabbed 32 times. The victim of a horrific murder. What's worse? He was the murderer. It all started on March 13, 1983. Richard, an abusive man with a history of domestic violence, was searching for his girlfriend, Beverly. Earlier in the day, she packed her bags and left him, this time for good. Richard was angry. He was going to find her and bring her home. He thought Diane would know where she was hiding. After all, they were sisters. So he headed straight for her apartment. Entering the building, Richard waited in the hallway. A few minutes later, Diane arrived home. Where is she? Richard confronted Diane. Where is she? I don't know where she is. Where is she? I'm not going to tell you. Diane would not reveal her sister's location. Richard forced himself into the apartment. Where is she? Don't lie to me. You know what? She doesn't want to see you. She doesn't want to see you. Where is she? Where is she? Out of my apartment. In a rage, Richard lost touch with reality. He began hallucinating. In his twisted mind, he believed Diane was really his girlfriend, Beverly. Beverly! I'm gonna kill you. Pulling out a butcher knife, he raised his arm and thrust it into her body. She fell to the floor. He continued his attack. 32 stab wounds later, Diane was dead. Richard sat down on the couch. He was crying and confused. In a moment of clarity, he realized his violent behavior caused him to do the unthinkable. He was guilty of murder, and this controlling man was now a killer. And even though that happened... Thank you. Was that pretty much about like how it happened, as far as you know? Well, as far as, um, well, the day after the, <coughs> the hearing, um, if you want to call it a hearing, um, I went up to the state pen to see Rick because Rick didn't have to testify to anything. He took a flea bargain. And um, he got off light because he's, he was, after he killed that, he went to the club drinking. So he had alcohol and drugs in his system when they got him. So I went up to the prison to see him and he uh, pretty much told me, um, he and I got in an argument because she wouldn't tell him where I was. And that he got so mad he could see red and in the red was my face. And he said he just started stabbing her and couldn't stop. He stabbed her from the front numerous times and then stabbed her from the, all the way down in the back. I'm yeah. looking at this picture. I see no remorse. No. When he went to Berlin for court, because we had to get a domestic violence order, me and my husband, yeah. because Rick has made it clear when he gets out, we're both dead. Yeah, okay. Um, so I got my domestic violence order, which I really don't believe in, because yeah. it's a piece but, of paper. Yeah, yeah. And he said, and he's still getting out on parole. And he's still. And he said that you're both dead. Yeah. And that, that, that was written in the um, restraining order. That was our statement in the restraining order that Richard Hartman threatened to kill me and my husband. And when the judge asked him, is there anything in this restraining order, domestic violence order, that's not true? And Richard said, no. He says, give them their domestic violence order. If that's what they think will keep them safe, go ahead and give it to them. And they're still letting, folks, they're still letting that's still letting this man, who still is threatening the mother of his children with death, now letting him out. There's something wrong with our judicial system. And this, that's a prison picture. Yeah, okay. He looks, in in he looks mean in that. He looks mean now. Yeah, he yeah. altered his, his looks since this picture. Okay. But I'm telling you, I mean, that's a, I mean, it's incredible, and I, I can't put it in my mind how someone could do this and not have any remorse. Huh. You know, I can't, I can't. I'm going to tell you that I do see him going back to prison within three to six months after he gets out. 
okay? And the scary part is your children have to go in hiding now, do they not? So mm, he my, my youngest daughter is really afraid of him because of some comments he made to her mm -hmm. at the Berlin Courthouse. <laughs> okay. And uh, they have to go in hiding, which isn't fair. They can't have a normal life while he's out because they don't know when he's going to come or not. You know what I'm saying? And this is horrible, folks. We have petitions that will be going out. Uh, I have a, a couple of petitions at my house and one in Pittsburgh. If you want to sign a petition, give me a call. Um, my number is always on the show. If anybody wants to come on, on my TV show that opposes this petition, also, you're more than welcome to, okay? Uh, but however, I think this is important for victims' rights. And now, uh, was your family, was it an abusive relationship that yeah. you were in? Yes. Um, first, you know, they're, they're nice when you first start going with them. And then after you're with them for a year, it's the name calling. You're no good, you're ugly, you're fat, nobody's going to want you. And then the first hit is always, oh, I'm sorry, I love you. Then the second hit is, look what you made me do. I did that because I love you, you know? And then you, you really start believing in that. You really start believing you really are no good. You might have done something wrong to where you made this guy so mad to hit you. And the beatings were getting so bad, he was starting to smother me with pillows, and my kids were getting afraid of men. Um, so I tried to leave, and he threatened to kill me and my kids if I left. And the police didn't do anything about it? I've had the police involved. They pick him up, he gets out, $1,000 bail, $100, 10%. $100 bail, $10. And at that time, they had that one judge down here who's no longer a judge. Okay. I think it was O'Neill. Yeah. And he was letting all the batterers go. All the, you know, men that were beating on their wives or wives beating on their husbands go. And. I, I had a domestic violence order, well, um, restraining order back then is what it was called. The, the day he killed my sister, he was served. And he yeah. walked over there with it in hand. Okay. What do you tell these young men and women or older men and women that are in domestic violence disputes? What, what do you have to say to them? How, uh, if, they, if they're living in an abusive relationship, do you encourage them to get counseling? Do you encourage them to get the hell out of their, I mean, the heck out of their relationship? Yes. Okay. Don't stay. Um, if a man is hitting you, calling you names, or belittling you, keeping you away from your friends and family, okay. they don't love you, they're controlling you. Now, do you feel you have to go into hiding when he gets out? That's what a lot of people want me to do. Yeah. But I'm afraid if I go into hiding again, somebody else is going to get killed. Okay. <coughs> so in other words, if you went into hiding, it would be almost like defeating your purpose yes. of what you're doing. And okay. I would be his victim again. Yeah. I, I don't want to be his victim. I want to be a survivor. I want to be a survivor. I want to fight. I want to fight for my right to live. And you have that right. And fight for my children. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think you're a remarkable woman. I really do. I think it takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing, knowing that this gentleman is getting out, knowing that there's a possibility of him coming near you. I believe that <coughs> it takes, a, my hat is off to you. It takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing. And I would hope that the people that are listening to my show or if they read the article, support this lady. Support what she believes in. Knowing this, okay? I do believe that your bill is going to be passed, but it may not go this legislation, but the next legislation. I also see that you are going to become very strong in what you're doing. I don't believe that your, your ex-husband is going to be out for very long. He wasn't the next husband, though, was he? No, he was he's, I was never boy. married to him, and mm -hmm. the media and everybody keeps saying he's my husband. Now, how long were you together with him? Almost four years. Almost four years. Not by choice, but... No, not by terror? Huh, by terror. terror. He, no. he kidnapped me and no. held me yeah. hostage and stuff. Now, do you still have nightmares? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Folks, this is a 
This is not a rehearsed segment. People, she had no idea what I was going to ask her when you came on. And she's terrified now. <laughs> Relax, and we're not going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. I also see with you, you've been a very much of an encouragement to her, haven't you? That's right. And you're still supporting her? That's right. And you'll always support her? Yes. I can see that, okay? You two are like sisters, but you're not sisters, am I correct? Or half sisters. Oh, you're half sisters, okay. Yeah. Also, I see that um, you're going to get an award out of all this. I'm looking at either a state recognition or I'm looking at a uh, uh, some sort of Washington recognition. I do believe that you're going to be speaking to a lot of people, so be prepared for a lot of, I think I told you this on the phone, but be prepared for a lot of traveling, okay? Be prepared for <coughs> um, going to a lot of different places, making speeches throughout New Hampshire, throughout New England, throughout New York, or wherever, okay? Also, <coughs> excuse me, I, I, I also know that you need to write that book. You know how I, I think I told you you need to write a book on TV? Yeah, and I, I would definitely asked you how did you know about that because I've been starting to do a book. Okay, when you start, because I guess this, <laughs> when you start doing this book, you're gonna realize even more that it wasn't your fault, okay? Because there still is some blame on your part that you're blaming yourself for. Well, maybe if I had have been there, or maybe if I had have done this differently, maybe if I had have done that differently. Okay. I'm telling you now, it was all pre-planned. You know, my wisdom, sister told me that. In the wisdom, excuse me? My sister told me that. Oh, could you explain that to our, my viewing audience? Well, for about two to three weeks before my sister was murdered, and we were together just about every day. Okay. And she kept telling me, Beverly, Rick's gonna kill you, but it's not your turn. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take the killing for you. Did you believe it? It scared me, yeah. And um, she told me exactly how she was gonna die. Did you hear that, folks? She told him, her, how she was going to die, okay? I believe, this falls into what I do for, I believe that we know what is time, how we're going to die, nine out of 10. Um, I believe that when it's time, we know this, whether we're gonna die in a car accident, whether um, the unfortunate occurrence with your sister, we are given a pre-warning, okay? And <clears throat> if we choose to ignore it, or if we wanna do something differently, it gives us a chance to change the way our, our occurrence of our life. Okay. Um, you look at your sister's a hero now? My sister is a hero. And I agree with you. I think she needs to be applauded for what she's, she's doing. She's a hero. I really do. You know. Um, we also know that your, is it your oldest daughter that's here with us? My oldest daughter? Yeah. Who, who's, is she your That's oldest? my youngest. Oh, that's your youngest daughter. Okay. She folks too is living in fear. Um, she's not gonna appear on my TV show because of fear, and that's sad. So afraid that he may see her. So afraid that she can't have a normal breathing life like you and I would have. It's not right. His butt should be back in behind bars, okay? <coughs> His butt, you know, whether, you know, and the other children are fear too. And our criminal system is allowing the criminals to have more rights, more rights than you and I will ever have. They have a library with all the law documents. They have People who molest children have more rights than the poor child does. Someone who abuses their wife has more rights than you and I have. Isn't it time for us to turn to our spiritual beings, whether you want to call them God, whether you want to call them the universal spirits I call them, to get the help. Stop, stop this, stop the violence. Make stronger laws. Educate the people. The money that we put in for education to the schools, let's put it in there. Let's break the cycle. And unfortunately, a lot of times what I'm seeing with him, he was an abused child. 
okay? He was abused. He didn't know any other way. I'm saying that your childhood wasn't easy either, am I correct? No, it wasn't. So what happened was, and what as I'm seeing, is you got into this relationship, jumping out of the abusive relationship you had when you were growing up into another relationship because you didn't understand the consequences of it or you felt that you deserved it. Was, it was normal. Yeah, I mean. it was a very normal thing, but it's not normal. And you have six children yes. that you brought up by yourself? Yes. Your husband was also an alcoholic? He was an alcoholic. He also, you don't see him anymore? Uh, I see my second husband. Okay, but you also, you overcome a lot of hurdles, haven't you? Yes. Okay, you have become a very strong person for you. Uh, you've also worked very hard, okay, but you're not a quitter, okay? You, you also have a lot of financial relief coming to you. I'm not going to tell you you're going to be a millionaire or anything like this, but I'm going to tell you that you have a lot of financial relief coming to you. And I'm also going to tell you you did a great job as a parent. I know it wasn't easy. I know you got frustrated and want to take out the belt or whatever. I'm not saying you did that because I don't see that around you. But also, your religious spirit is very important to both of you. Okay, and I don't mean it's a church, I don't mean it's any name of religion, but you've got to follow it on through here. Let your, let your spiritual guides or your spiritual beliefs work with you, okay? And you really got to stop being so obsessed with this bill, because you know so many on this, okay? It's okay, and I'm, I'm glad that you're pushing this bill. I think you should. I would never discourage you from it, but you can't neglect the ones that love you too. Do you understand what I mean by that? Okay. They're, got, they're your main support. They're the ones that are encouraging you to do this. Okay. Right or wrong, they're there for you. And you're doing the right thing. Okay. Um, if there were awards to be given, I would definitely give you one. Okay. But I, I believe that you're doing the right thing. I do see a lot of progress with this. But I also know you're moving out of this whole area altogether. You've got to stop letting other people control your life, okay? One of the things I'm concerned about is your mother still controls your life, okay? Now it's time for Beth, who's been through many, 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 many years of uh, people controlling your life that you really don't know how to control your own life. And every time it seems like you're starting to control your life, Get the rip you fall back. Well, let me tell you when I'm only phone call away. I'll, I'll tell you this on TV so I can't backtrack. How's that? But I'll tell you, you have a lot of things going for you. Get back into college. Get your high school degree. Get your college degree. Write that book. You'll be a number one seller. I know you will. You will probably go on other shows besides Maury Povich. But I, I do see you becoming successful with this book. I think you have a lot to offer in the world, and I think that you're doing it for the right reasons, okay? But don't let your petition overshadow what other works that you're doing, okay? You have a tremendous family that want to get to know you. You have a tremendous husband that loves you. And think of your baby, your little dogs. Folks, they got five... Miniature pinchers. Miniature pinchers. Boy, they can bark. <laughs> and... Um, she, I met her daughter will keep in hiding when I met her daughter, a beautiful young lady who has also has a lot to offer. Um, then she has her sister who is fantastic, you know. And you have two other children? Yeah. And they all live in fear of this? Um, my son, I'm not quite sure. He's very confused. Okay. Um, he was sorry he didn't go to the Berlin court because there he didn't have to give his name because he doesn't want his father to have his name. Um, but he doesn't want nothing to do with his father neither. Okay, well, that's fine. That's he's, understandable. I, he's curious. He wants to face him once. I know way. he wants to face him yeah. at least once. Yeah. And then you have another daughter? Yeah. yeah. Is this guy moving around anywhere where you guys are all living? Well... My oldest daughter is in Concord. 
Um, my son is away from, I don't want to name the town. No, that's fine. Watching. Um, my dead daughter around My here. oldest daughter is not his. Do you, is she afraid of him though? She, yeah. Okay. What do you do for relaxation? I mean, do you ever burn candles and meditate? I burn candles. Um, I do a lot of crocheting. The I try to. Yeah, okay. Do you know that everybody has psychic ability? I think I told you since my house. But yours is intuitional. Where you see things like you, before they actually happen. Okay. You've got to allow this to happen for you. Okay. You've got to believe that whatever happens happens for a reason. So that's what my sister said. <laughs> if your sister hadn't have died. And I'm not trying to sound cold when I say this. Who would ever think of a bill like this? Your sister's like a hero or a martyr or whatever you want to call it. Because now you had the initiative to build up a petition uh, to pass a law where something that went wrong can be rectified in respect that they have to register in the police department. Yeah, and that way the, the um, victims didn't die in vain. That's right. Um, without this bill, it's like, like their deaths don't mean nothing, is the way I look at it. Okay. And with this bill, like I said, it would be like a memorial for them. Mm -hmm. And it would also help the families because they don't have their daughter anymore, but they still got to worry about the killer right. when the killer gets out. And are you doing any of this for you? For me? Yeah. I don't know. I think I'm doing it more for dying and for other victims. Yeah. Okay. I, I love that unselfishness that you're doing it for your sister and other, quote unquote, other victims. I think that's fantastic. We're going to be closing up here. Any comments that you want to make? Huh? Any other comments? Okay. No. Do um, you want me to give my address or something? Oh, yeah. If they want to send yeah. Yeah. letters? Yeah. Um, if you want to send support letters to me, you can send them to 446 School Street in Berlin, New Hampshire, 03570, and to Beverly Sinai. Or you can email me at my email address. Okay, you want to give me an email again? It's bevfromberlin at aol.com. Okay. Let's, folks, let's keep, oops, <laughs> let's, let's remember her and the two little children here. And let's remember what this guy did. Let's remember, folks, this guy is an animal. He is not a stranger to domestic violence or rape. Okay. And when you see this, call your legislators, call your representatives, call anybody that can be helpful. Okay? Call it. It's so important. Um, hopefully, Bev will be, I'm doing a thing at Blake's Restaurant on March, I mean, yeah, March 13th from 2 to 5. Hopefully, Bev will be able to make it, and you can meet her in person. She'll tell you more about it. Uh, we're going to be saying goodbye to everybody, and thank you for listening. Give me a call. Any questions, positive or negative. Bye-bye now.